Greetings to everyone, greetings to all the family out there, greetings to all of my health and fitness enthusiasts. My name is Dr. David Roots. Normally I do videos talking about mindset, uh, nutrition, wellness, natural medicine, things like that. Today I'm going to do a product review. I don't normally do product reviews, but I was very impressed with this and I figured that it would, this review would help people like me when I was looking for my search for um, a, a, a heart um, monitor and, I, and I've purchased several of them already and I wish that I had you know decent reviews so I know the reviews that that I have watched really helped me and I wanted to just provide a review of my own for people that might be looking to get a decent heart monitor to help with their, their, their health and fitness journey so we are going to be reviewing the Polar H10 okay so the Polar H10 this is what it looks like like this all right it comes in two parts you have the actual monitor itself okay the little monitor here and then you have the strap like that and it only activates when the two connections on the back are um, hooked into the strap on the monitor like so okay I'm sorry onto the strap like so okay so when you connect these it's quite simple you literally just snap them in all right and then you have the uh, monitor there so in this review what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about one the accuracy and how this monitor compares to other monitors uh, that I have purchased we're going to talk about the, the the fit and how does it feel when you are, are wearing the the monitor okay and third we're going to talk about the actual analysis that the monitor provides okay which is probably for me um, the best part of it so far there, it has pluses definitely lots of pluses has a few minuses as well but overall I definitely say it's been a uh, value for for money so without further ado let's get into our review of the Polar H10 by the way make sure that you are buying the one that you want because they have different models so they have the H9 and they have the H10 okay the h9 does not allow you to start your sessions without being next to in proximity of the the monitor itself so i actually bought that one first and then i took that back okay and then i went and bought the the polar h10 so you want to make sure the polar h10 for example i like to play football i can start that monitor put my phone on the side and then I can go and play football go for a run and then when I get back and I uh, and and uh, stop the session it will download or would it record and update all of the different information that would have recorded um, over that particular time so that's my that's the first piece of advice make sure you are purchasing the uh, right monitor so let's see if we can go ahead and for, and get into our actual review of the Polar H10 okay so first part how do you put it on okay so this will probably be the most uncomfortable part because it's actually right now is winter I'm in London actually recording this this video not winter it's springtime but it feels like winter time and the one negative thing about this uh, this heart monitor okay is that the contacts which is on the back so this part here needs to be moist in order for it to start working now that means that you could obviously you could wear it and you could um, you know start running and jogging and so on and so on and then maybe it'll get moist then however it does not really activate until it detects your heartbeat so you kind of have to moisten this first okay in order to to start it and obviously then when you put that on it can be quite quite chilly okay so we're going to do that now I'm just going to get my some water that I have here make sure I'm in front of the camera properly okay so look, what I normally do is just take some water that I might have with me and I'll just uh, just put it here for a minute just put some water on my hand like that you don't need a lot okay and I literally just take it and I just dampen down the, the the inside of the strap like so okay so once that once that's damp 
uh, you it has an adjustable band here I liked my I've tried it multiple times I like the way I like to wear it is very very tight and we're going to talk about that in a minute okay so you can adjust the band I, in fact I think I'm going to make this a bit tighter as well I'm going to tighten this up a little bit more because when I'm exercising if I'm running or whatever um, I don't want it to move at all okay so once I have that you literally um, you can then lift up your shirt I have a mic on so, so you can lift up your shirt like so and this is the the part whoa, whoa, whoa. hopefully you can still hear me that feels very uncomfortable so now I have it on and I can slide it up here so there's a strap here with a little click a little tab that you can click and you just click it in like that and then you turn it around turn it around like that so it fits underneath your clothes you want it I'm looking in the camera so I can see so you want it at chest height like in the middle of your sternum so that's it that's the monitor on like so and then you can obviously you can then put your clothes back to how you had them on okay tuck my shirt in it's a bit chilly out here hopefully the mic is still working and hopefully you can still uh, hear me and I didn't make it, uh, too much noise so right now in order to activate it I need to get my phone and I need to open up the app so I'll go to the Polar Beat app which I downloaded make sure it's comfortable and to see if it's detecting my heart rate which it is okay so right now after that little bit of, of moving around my heart rate is at 77 uh, so this is what the app looks like I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this but I'll show you this in more detail um, a little bit later on so at the left it has your heart rate and it also has a GPS signal which you can which goes green when it says it has the signal so right now the heart rate's about 75 so let's look at how this compares I bought some other heart monitors with me and let's see how this may compare to um, what what is being read on on the app okay so I have this I can't even remember what this one is where I got it from I just got it off the internet um, it was the most affordable I didn't want to buy a Fitbit so I got a cheaper version and it was it's actually okay this one here so it's a little wrist held monitors your steps and it can monitor your heart heart rate as well um, the only thing I didn't like about this this one okay so this is what that looks like so this is a little strap one is that you have to wear it quite tight and I felt found that a bit uncomfortable so with this one I can tap to get my heart rate and I'm gonna compare that to to what's uh, on the app so this one takes a little bit of time to to load up so this is saying 92 90 this is coming down 89 this one is saying 69 okay so the chest monitor is saying 74 this one's saying 73 72 so this is just calibrating 69 68 67 65 just giving it a while to to actually calibrate <laughs> 63 64 so it's it settled around is jumping up and down so you can see this is is not very accurate this one because it's it's jumping up and down so about 70 and this is also saying 71 so generally 
they are in agreement generally okay i've also had this pulse oximeter as well okay i got this during um covid time just to make sure that you know if there's ever a need you can monitor your blood oxygen as well and this also does beats per minute as well okay so basically your your, your pulse so this is directly they're, they're both measuring the same thing to be honest because they both use similar technology so let me use this one so this will take a while also but this one is actually quite quick so the advantage of this the pulse oximeter is it also gives you your blood oxygen levels as well so just waiting for this to to actually register so this is saying 64 the polar h10 is saying 64 as well okay 68 64 66 so generally they are all uh, in agreement in terms of the the heart rate that's the comparison now there's a lot of research going into the um the polar h10 so i would suggest and other people have done reviews on that i would suggest that probably uh this one the pulse oximeter and uh this one is probably the more reliable than this more cheaper version i got off of the uh the internet so let's move on to the uh review point number two which is the feel of it okay the actual feel and the comfortability of the polar h10 okay so now we want to talk about the the feel uh, of the polar h10 and how does it feel comfortability wise um for me is is i would say uh eight out of ten eight out of ten because as you can see sometimes i keep doing this i keep kind of adjusting it uh, because it kind of feels like it's going to fall down now i think probably if i had someone to help me to to adjust the back part of it so that was higher on my back i even thought about maybe doing it like this way around like that so over the shoulder and seeing if it worked that way because it uh, it does tend to slip a bit and that's uncomfortable because you keep wanting to to adjust it okay but otherwise than that i i'm sure if i'm when you're going running and things like that you tend to probably forget about it but after a while you're going to feel it slipping down so maybe i mean it's already quite tight as it is i don't want to make it any more tighter than that but i might try that as well so in terms of the comfortability of it i would say eight out of ten compared to the other watch that i was wearing which i took off definitely the watches for me personally i don't like to feel of that restriction um, on my on, on my arm and um, i know there's some ones that you can put on your arm on a band like that maybe that might be more comfortable but as a compromise the way this is fits um, here you can't even really see it underneath my my skin i think that generally um, the fit of it is is halfway very decent so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to do some exercises i'll get a little workout while i'm here and and you can see how to pull the h10 actually um you know the comfortability of wearing it while you're doing uh, some various different exercises
for our final part of the review of the Polar H10, let's take a look at the interface. So the interface you would use in your mobile and um, it's called the Polar Beat app. You can see here that the blue heart rate icon is flashing. That's because I don't have the heart rate monitor on at this time. But when you have the heart rate monitor on you and uh, clipped on and activated with a bit of moisture like we sp I spoke about earlier on in the video, that will give you heart rate. The green means that it's picking up the GPS signal if you've allowed that in your mobile. And then here you can have different aspects of um, different training regimes that you can use. You can use running. Um, I'm doing this on my laptop. I'm doing a uh, mirroring of my mobile on my laptop so I'm not going to be able to shift it I don't think but it would have running hiking you know jogging so on and so on um, different types of exercises that you can add and then you just press the sign <coughs> when you want to actually get it going down the bottom is the most interesting thing so this is where you have the actual previous sessions Okay, so we're going to look at one of the sessions to show you an example. So this is the session that I did uh, that you saw in the video, the little mini session with the pull-ups and the, uh, the um, burpees and dips and so on. So it gives you lots of information, tells you the duration of the uh, session, tells you your maximum heart rate, how many calories you will burn, your heart rate average, how much fat you've burned, the distance, all sorts of things, pace max, pace average, which is probably more beneficial if it was more of a, a running sort of thing, whereas I was just doing a workout. And then if you go down, you can see here that it gives you the uh, your heart rate, the, the range of different uh, measurements of your heart rate over the duration of the exercise, as well as gives you your location of where you went so it tracks you on a map because remember the GPS signal is is interactive with is sorry is activated what I really like to use because this is why I bought the heart rate monitor chest monitor is this feature so this measures your heart rate um, well, it measures your heart rate but it shows the different zones at which the amount of time you spent at those particular zones of your heart rate and if you went back on the actual app it tells you the, what the different colors actually mean okay so obviously the lighter colors are less uh, max of your heart rate and the darker colors towards the green orange so green yellow and red are where you're approaching more of your maximum heart rate and so you can click on this and it actually expands it. So this is after you finish your, your, your session and you can go along that particular session and look at your heart rate and how it's changed over that point of time. And when you go back in the app and you look at your heart rate, if you want to build up endurance and fitness, then you should be spending more time in the green, yellow and red zone Obviously, the red zone is approaching your maximum heart rate. So you want to try to exercise up into this red zone. But obviously, you don't want to uh, go over that, that sort of heart rate. And the more of the lighter zones, the gray and the blue, are where you're just kind of maybe warming down or cooling down. or And they give it to you some information. They will say, for example, in the gray zone is where you can comfortably talk. Whereas in the red zone, you find it, you find it very difficult to catch your breath. So this is where you'll be exercising really at a high, um, a high rate um, for your particular heart rate. Now, when you look at that little bit of exercise I did, you can see it's, it's quite clear because I started off with skipping. So here's the skipping, the two sessions of, of skipping. And then I think I was interrupted by someone. You didn't see that in the camera. And then I went into the... Um, burpees I did a set of burpees and then into pull-ups and then into the dips and then I think I did one more set of pull-ups 
and that's interesting to me because normally with skipping that wasn't a very intense normally I do uh, 100 skips I think that was about 20 or 30 and um, a few sets just to get it on camera um, but when I'm doing 100 skips my heart rate goes right, right up towards the red zone which I know is very good to build my fitness but it's very hard to maintain that so that was interesting to see you know what exercises actually cause your heart rate to increase towards those endurance and those zones where you're going to build fitness those are the those are the zones the green yellow and red if you want to be obviously improving your fitness let's say you are a rugby player football player something that requires endurance and fitness then you want to be training at those green yellow and red zones and obviously making sure that you obviously have good recovery and rest time as well what was also interesting is that you can learn a lot so for example you can see even doing things like pull-ups increases your heart rate by you know very good amounts to the um, to the green yellow and and red zones so it doesn't always have to be like sprinting or you know jogging for long distances um, in fact this is what they say that some of the research says that if you want to build your fitness yes it's good to do cardiovascular but you can build fitness in the gym um, as well doing the whole body exercises like pull-ups like burpees uh, not so much dips but even dips you know increases your heart rate somewhat so this is one of the best features for me because it can really you can really look back on the way your heart rate changes with exercise so if you have any concerns about your heart rate or you're an athlete and you're trying to develop your heart rate I thought this was actually probably the best feature um, of this particular Perla H, uh, H10 and if you go back now if you look at here one thing I didn't say was in the list it can tell you if you see on the side it tells you the distances the average distances so this is 1.1 this is 0 0.1 1.3 if I click on that again you see down here it says 1.07 miles so that's in miles so it tells you the distances in miles that your sessions if you're running of course that your sessions um, actually actually cover so overall the polar H10 I would give a solid 8 slash 9 out of 10 in terms of the ease of use in terms of the comfortability in terms of the the information the best part about it is this app I haven't gone into this part so if you can see here if you can look at the uh, the info part this is where it will tell you some of the information about the different zones heart rate zone 2, light, you can go to heart rate zone 5, the maximum 90 to 100% of your heart rate max. So this app has lots of information that is um, available um, to, to give and I would definitely encourage anyone if they were interested in getting a heart rate monitor that this might be a very good, good um, heart rate monitor that would suit the purposes that you need even if you were an elite athlete cost wise it was actually quite reasonable as well again just make sure that you're buying you do the research make sure you're buying the particular heart rate monitor that works for your purposes I bought the H9 at first which only works if you're right you know quote unquote right next to your phone you don't need to be right next to your phone but um, it doesn't allow you to leave the presence of your your phone and then come back to it and it and it downloads whereas the h10 does okay and, and i believe they also have another model they also have a smartwatch that you can pair with it as well but i found the use of the phone uh, app the free polar beat app to be very very useful for my purposes